the beloved Southern writer Flannery O'Connor declared, All human nature vigorously resists grace, because grace changes us, and the change is painful. We have for you a special presentation from Fireside Mystery Productions. Grace was written and performed by our own Belle of East Tennessee, Ms. Allison Gwynn. Deeply inspired by the life and legends of her beloved granny, Allison takes us on a trip down a dark and twisted path that edges along a remote and forgotten patch of Appalachia. It's a bittersweet tale of isolation, cruelty, a lingering sense of menace, but also love, all laced and latticed with a distinct Southern Gothic style. Never had a toy that was all her own. Never had a toy that belonged only to her. You see, she was raised by her grandparents after her mother and father died, and during the Depression, well, you should be thankful for what little you got. So Daisy hardly ever had anything to call her own. Her grandparents took Daisy under their roof, but raised her more as a servant than as a granddaughter, and When she was done doing chores for her grandparents, she was sent to her aunts' and uncles' houses to do things for them. No, the only thing that little eight-year-old Daisy owned that was completely her own was a pine cone. A pine cone named Fluff, who she dressed up as a squirrel using scraps of flower bags and sackcloth. Ain't that the most pathetic thing you ever heard? She and Fluff were very happy until one day Daisy's grandpa caught her playing with little Fluff instead of bringing in the eggs from the chicken coop, and grandpa grabbed little Fluff and threw him in the wood stove. After Fluff's passing, rest in peace, poor little Daisy never had another toy. If she was lucky, she could look at her cousin Virginia's dolls when she went over to her Aunt Roberta's house to do chores there. Virginia was Daisy's age, but because she had a mama and daddy that loved her, she was well looked after and was rather plump and rosy-cheeked and dressed in the finest dresses the catalogs had to offer. She was quite the opposite of Daisy, who looked like a sad little scarecrow, filthy and giant-eyed, with hair sticking out every which way like pieces of hay. Daisy was helping her Aunt Roberta hang clothes one morning when Virginia came prancing out and revealed her newest play purdy. Look, cousin, Daddy gave me a new doll. Her name is Grace. Ain't she purdy? Daisy gasped. She'd never seen a doll so beautiful. The doll had blonde ringlets and a face of white porcelain so flawless and fine with little hints of blush on her cheeks, as pink as the crepe myrtle in summer. Grace the doll was dressed in a roughly cornflower blue dress, a blue that matched her shining glass eyes, which were framed with thick, curled black lashes. Virginia got closer to Daisy so she could get a real good look at Grace, and Daisy could swear she smelled... Honeysuckle, wafting from Grace's golden curls. She sleeps, too. Look. Virginia tipped the doll to lie on her back, and sure enough, little Grace closed her brilliant glass eyes. Daisy stared in amazement, but instantly felt a wave of sadness. She knew she'd never have anything as fine and pretty. 
Before she could stop herself, she stretched out her arms longingly, reaching out to Grace, hoping her little porcelain hand would grab onto Daisy's dusty palm. And the next thing she felt was the sting of a slap across her right cheek. She opened her eyes to see Virginia fuming at her. How dare you! You can't touch her! You're filthy! You smell and you'll get Grace all dirty! And with that, Virginia flounced off, and the glorious Grace was gone, leaving a waft of honeysuckle behind her. Daisy's cheeks flushed with shame when she heard her cousin's rude words. She couldn't smell herself but she couldn't remember the last time her grandparents permitted her to have a bath. All of a sudden, she was filled with anger at the unfairness of it all. It wasn't her fault that she smelled bad and that she was dirty. It wasn't her fault that her parents died and left her all alone. Why was she being punished this way? Daisy, stop dreaming and get back to hanging them clothes. Then you can sweep out the house oh, and get started on the fireplace. Aunt Roberta bellowed across the yard and Daisy snapped back to work, knowing that she'd get a spanking if she did any more lollygagging. But all the while she worked, her mind was on Grace the doll. Later on, as she was sweeping the hallway... Daisy noticed Grace lying on top of Virginia's unmade bed. She could hear her cousin outside playing with her brothers. She checked for signs of her aunt. The coast was clear. So she crept into Virginia's room and slowly and carefully picked up Grace. And oh, what a strange feeling came over her. Daisy, never having anyone to love her or care for her, looked at the doll and she actually felt what she guessed was genuine, honest-to-goodness love. Not only for the doll, but she had the feeling that Grace the doll loved her back. And the feeling was so wonderful. It was like she had been starving all her life and then in that moment gobbled up every bit of love she was feeling right up. She hugged and rocked Grace over and over and found herself making a little song for her. You're my Gracie, I love you so. You're my Gracie, please never go. Stay by my side, say you'll be mine. We'll be friends till the end of time. If anyone should take you away, they'll regret it till their dying day. Oh, Daisy was so enthralled and consumed with this new feeling that she started singing louder and louder, and her singing caught the attention of Aunt Roberta, who promptly snatched the doll from Daisy's arms. As she was doing so, Daisy could have sworn that for a split second, she could feel the doll's hand grip tightly to hers. Virginia! bellowed Aunt Roberta. Go get me a switch. Daisy's cousin came running with one of the strongest twigs in the yard and a smile bigger than the Cheshire cat's. And with that switch, Aunt Roberta gave Daisy one of the biggest whoopings in memory. But what stinged more than the spanking was the sound of Virginia laughing with glee at her cousin's pain. <laughs> and the sight of her holding little Grace in her arms. Virginia was gloating until all of a sudden, she screamed out in pain and threw the doll to the ground. Virginia held onto her shoulder and continued to holler and carry on like she was the one who had gotten the whooping. She bit me! Virginia yelled out and pointed to the lifeless doll laying on the ground. Aunt Roberta rushed to her daughter's side and checked her shoulder. Sure enough, there was a big welt on her shoulder, the same shoulder she was holding Grace against. 
Oh, come now, it must be a spider or some kind of bug. They crawl inside when the weather gets cold like it does this time of year. Oh, come on now, sugar, don't cry. Aunt Roberta hugged and kissed Virginia until eventually she calmed down. After drying her tears, Virginia picked up Grace off the floor, dusted her off, and gave her a tentative sniff. Ugh, Mama, we'll have to wash her. She stinks like Daisy. And holding the doll at arm's length, she put Grace away in the cupboard. <laughs> Daisy walked back to her grandparents' house, and all the way home, she sang her song to Grace. You're my Gracie, I love you so. You're my Gracie, please never go. Stay by my side, say you'll be mine. We'll be friends till the end of time. If anyone should take you away, they'll regret it till their dying day. Despite the whooping and meanness from her cousin Virginia and Aunt Roberta, she found herself actually happy. For the first time, she felt affection and love. Someone loved her, and she loved them right back. Now, Daisy didn't sleep on a bed. She slept with a ratty blanket on the floor next to the wood stove. Most of the time, she awoke with shivers because the fire went out, and that's how she knew when it was time to wake up and start the day's unending list of chores. Tonight, however, she wasn't awoken by the shiver of chilly air, but by a smell. The smell of honeysuckle. Daisy's eyes popped open, and to her surprise, laying beside her was Grace. She squealed with delight and hugged and kissed the doll. And again, that warm feeling that Grace loved her washed over her, and she rocked and hugged her, singing her little song for Grace over and over until she must have lulled herself back to sleep. The next thing she knew, she woke to the feeling that she was having her arm jerked out of its socket as the doll was taken away from her and Grandpa began to shout and shake her. Then she saw Aunt Roberta looking furious behind him with the doll in her arms. Grandpa shook her so hard her teeth chattered. After all we done for you, you steal. We brought you in. Put food in your belly and clothes on your back. And this is how you repay us, by being a thief. You went in the middle of the night to your Aunt Roberta's house and stole your cousin's doll and scratched up poor Virginia so bad she was bleeding. I ought to throw you out. And I would if I weren't a Christian. Well, the Bible says an eye for an eye, so... I reckon we should give you back some of the pain you gave your cousin last night. Daisy was made to bend over a chair and bare her legs. Grandpa got his belt off the hook on the wall and a pain bigger than Daisy ever felt before radiated from the back of her legs to the top of her head as she screamed out in pain. Then she felt a trickle down her legs and she couldn't tell if it was blood or if she'd peed herself. She was in such agony. See, Grandpa, for the first time ever, 
used the buckle end of the belt to whoop Daisy with. And it was so bad, the poor thing passed out. Daisy opened her eyes to find pitch blackness. She heard the sound of the cow lowing and could smell hay and animals. She was in the barn. Having no lantern, she managed to stand and edge her way to a small crack of moonlight she saw at the door. She tried to open the heavy wooden barn door, but it wouldn't budge, and she could hear the clank of chains that Grandpa had locked her in with. The horrible stinging in her legs reminded her of what had happened, and Daisy began to weep. She didn't know how the doll had gotten to her, but she knew she wasn't a thief. She wept for the pain of her legs and the pain of her heart to have the only person who loved her ripped from her arms, her little Gracie. She wept because instead of getting love from her grandparents, she received only meanness from her grandpa and cold distance from her grandma. She wept because she never knew the love of her mama and daddy. And she finally wept because she was scared she would never know any love ever again. She found a dry patch on the ground and curled up into a ball and began to rock. She rocked and hugged herself because she needed comfort. She wished her Gracie was with her again. She sang to ease her sorrow and made a wish that Gracie was in her arms. You're my Gracie, I love you so. You're my Gracie, please never go. A wind picked up as she sang. The cow started to move. And the horses whinnied. The chickens cackled and the trees creaked and rustled something furious. Scared by the sudden weather, she continued to rock and sing, thinking of grace, singing stronger, wishing. Stay by my side, say you'll be mine. We'll be friends till the end of time. The wind grew stronger, yet as she sang... She thought the roof would be torn off the barn, not knowing what to do. She continued to sing to Grace, almost as a plea for help. If anyone should take you away. There was such a commotion that she could have sworn she heard her grandpa yelling and her grandma screaming. She carried on and Daisy sang harder. They'll regret it till their dying day. And suddenly, as soon as it started, The wind stopped, and there was silence, complete silence. Then, footsteps, tiny footsteps, quick footsteps, and a little giggle, (laughs) the giggle of a small child. In the rustle of the chains that dropped to the ground, and the door opened. I'm your Gracie, I love you so. I'm your Gracie, please never go. Stay by my side, say you'll be mine. We'll be friends till the end of time. If anyone should take me away, they'll regret it till their dying day. The next morning, Aunt Roberta woke up to find that Grace had disappeared again. In a fury, she rushed over to Grandma and Grandpa's house to find it in disarray. (gasps) Grandma and Grandpa's bodies were found with signs of a struggle and looks of terror on their faces. Someone had cut them with Grandpa's straight razor. She noticed tiny muddy footprints leading out the back door, heading to the barn. When she checked the barn, she found it completely empty. 
only a pile of chains outside the front and the cow roaming around outside. Daisy and Grace were never seen or heard from again. But in the fall, if you go up Martin's Creek here in East Tennessee on a stormy night, folks up here say that you can hear little girls laughing and smell honeysuckle in the wind. We sure hope you enjoyed this special presentation from Fireside Mystery Productions. Grace was written and performed by Allison Gwynn. It was directed, produced, and edited by me, Ali Silva, with additional production assistance by Faith Johnson, Mary Murphy, and Gustavo Rodriguez. The original music you heard was composed and performed by Allison Gwynn on auto harp, with Amelia Cormack on fiddle. We're still here, folks, and we hope that you'll keep an eye on our podcast feed for some exciting new content to come, featuring characters both new and familiar. Also, consider becoming a Patreon patron, just like Jeanette Howell. Hey, Jeanette! Oh, we are super grateful to you for your support and really excited that you've joined our amazing Patreon family. Y'all are the heroes that keep us going, especially when we forget our own advice and get a bit lost in the shadows. Your generous patronage means the world to us and bolsters and encourages all of our future endeavors. For all things Fireside, visit us at firesidemysterytheater.com. You can follow us on social media, if that's a thing you do, at Fireside Mystery. We've got a wealth of creepy content on our podcast feed with nearly a decade's worth of episodes. And it's all free. Go on and let the sweet honeysuckle-scented breeze guide you along that wooded trail. But be sure to stick to the path and away from the darkest shade of the oaks and the sycamores, where you know you best mind the shadows.